Exercise 1, Inventor 2025. Now what you're looking at here is actually an AutoCAD model, and we're going to go ahead and build this. And if you take a closer look, you can see some of the parameters that we're going to use as far as 3x5 for the overall block. There's going to be a 3 quarter of an inch hole and 1.5 stair, stair step. So let's begin. <clears throat> begin by going into Inventor and go to New. And we're in the United States here, so just make sure you're in the English system and you will find the standard IPT hit create. But if you wanted to go with metric, there's metric. Go ahead and hit create. The first thing I want to show are some of the settings. If you go to file and go to options, the options menu will show up and it looks like this. And in it, there's all sorts of things you could change and adjust. <clears throat> what we're looking to change is actually the colors. And as you can see here, there's some different options. I like the presentation setting. And also, as far as the background, I just like one color, it to be white. You get to choose whatever you like, but you'll see there's lots of different options in here as far as colors and such. I'm going to go with this one <clears throat> and hit close. You're welcome to do with whichever one you want, but just note that your colors might be different than mine. All right. Now to start a sketch, you go to start sketch here and it will bring up the three primary planes. These are your paper. There's the X, Y, which is basically your front plane. There's the X, Z, which is your right plane and the X, I'm sorry, that was the uh, Y, Z. And then the X, Z is your top plane. So you basically pick which one you want to sketch on. In this case, the first four exercises we're going to work on in this series are all on the front plane. And to be honest, it doesn't make too much of a difference which plane you start off on, but it's the typical protocol is to actually look at whatever part you're working on and determine what's the front of that. Is that the best profile to start sketching on? Or maybe the right side is, or maybe the top, and select that plane. Okay, let's begin. Now, you'll see up here, we have all the toolbars. <clears throat> if you want to be a more advanced user, you have the ability to minimize these things just by clicking and cycling through. If you accidentally cycle through, this is the button that will get you back. <clears throat> That's where you want. Now, over here is the browser. In this case, it has the model tree on it, and our sketch has already started. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the rectangle tool. If you hit the little arrow, you'll see there's all sorts of uh, little options for rectangles. That's a little arrow underneath rectangle, slots and polygons and such. We're just going to go with the two-point rectangle. Hover your pointer now over the crosshairs, and when you get the, in my case, it's a green dot. Go ahead and click. That's the origin and move your pointer to the upper right and you'll see that you could start typing in values for X and Y. In this case, the one that's highlighted in dark blue is the one that you could enter for that into that field. So we're gonna change that to three and you don't have to type 3.00 or click in there, you just type three. And then to cycle to the next dialog box, hit tab on your keyboard and go ahead and type in five for the height and hit enter. And now to zoom to fit, click on the rotation box right here in the upper right corner, and it will fit that to the screen. And hit escape. And the escape key on your keyboard takes you out of whatever tool you are in. And now you could actually move these around. If you have the wrong dimension, just simply double click and you could type in a new dimension and hit the green check and it will adjust. Uh, the undo button is right up here if you want. You could hit that and that will take you back down to five or just double click on the dimension and change it again. Go ahead and go to 3 Model and go to Extrude. Now, click on this little Home button in the upper right here, and that will zoom to fit an isometric view for us. Now, you'll see you also have this dialog box that has popped up, as well as you have a handle. If you click on the arrowhead, you could conceptually adjust this. And it's great, like I said, for conception. Uh, but uh, anyways, we're going to go ahead and type in a value. Go ahead and type in 0.5. There's all these other tricks where you could reverse it or go in both directions and so on and so forth. We'll, we'll look at those later. Hit OK. Now go ahead and select this face and you have the ability to edit the extrude depth, edit the sketch with those dimensions, or share it, which is basically like copying it. 
And what we're looking for really is just create sketch. So go ahead and select create sketch. And I'm going to go ahead and click on front here to center it again. And we'll use the rectangle tool once again. There is a line tool if we wanted, but rectangle in this case is just quicker and easier. So let's select, select that. Hover to the lower left corner. When you get the dot that appears, click and move your pointer to the right. Now you could snap to this edge and click, and then you would later have to put a dimension for 1.5, or you could set it to 3.0 and 1.5. The thing is they won't be linked then, and if you change the block behind there to four inches, this will stay at three. So we actually want to link it to this edge, so click on that edge. And then go to the dimension tool and select this line here and this line here, and we're just clicking, and move your pointer to the right and click again and type in 1.5. So there you could see where we could actually add in dimensional values. You could also add constraints, like these are common elements of geometry, perpendicularity, horizontal, vertical, you could lock things in, and tangency and so on and so forth. We will look at those in the future. Let's go ahead and go to 3D model and extrude again. Now, it allows us to extrude further, and it also remembered our last setting of 5.5, which is a half inch. That's actually exactly what we want in this case. So you could just go ahead and hit OK, and it merges the two blocks together as one, and we have our monolith stair structure, as you see here. OK, now we want, I want to show you how to put a hole in here. Now, there is a hole tool, and we'll get to that in a few weeks, but right now we're just going to, I want to show you how to draw geometry to remove material. So select this face that we want to sketch on. Notice you don't have to select the planes. By the way, just to show you this, if you hit the little plus symbol to the left of the origin, you will actually see those planes we saw earlier. And you could select from this list to start sketch. So like if I click on it, you'll see there's a little option to start sketch, which we don't want to do that just yet. But once you have a model and it has flat surfaces, you could sketch on any flat surface. So click on this face and go to the little green plus symbol here to create a sketch. Click on the front box and go to circle. Now, again, there's different types of, there's a circle, there's ellipse. We'll go with center point circle. Get to the upper left quadrant of this block about where mine is. And you'll see the X and Y should be about one in the X and four in the Y, roughly. Click, drag out the circle and go ahead and type in 0.75, hit enter. Now we need to locate that accurately, and we could use the dimension tool to do this. Click on dimension, select the center point of the circle, and we want to measure it off of this edge. So click out to that edge, and move your pointer up here, center the dimension. Those of you who haven't taken a dimensioning class have a tendency to do this or this, you put it on edges. Get it out in the open. This is a language. You want to be able to read it easily. So make sure that you could see them. And one way is by centering them between what they call the extension lines or those arrows that you see there too. Okay, hit enter. We're still in dimension. Now we can select the top edge and measure the center point from there. Click. And then move your pointer to the left and center the dimension. Click. Type in 1 and hit enter. We're ready to extrude. Go to 3 Model. Click on Extrude, and now you have the ability, notice it goes forward and it's adding material, but watch this, if we drag it backwards, the AI knows that there's a solid structure behind it, so it automatically flips it to Cut versus Join. So in this case, it actually does a nice job for us. However, there's one better we could do. We could select Through All to ensure it always goes through backwards. And we could have flipped it this, this way too, but anyway, let's go ahead and hit OK. And so now we have the base structure. Let's go to fillet. Click on fillet and set the fillet to one for one inch. And now hover over the edge that you would normally hit if you had a file in your hand and you were gonna file this down to round it. Click on that edge. Now go ahead and click on this edge. And those are the only two I want you to do right now. Hit okay. And now you can see that's how we put a fillet in. Let's go to chamfer, click on chamfer, and set it to 0.125 in here. And notice you could go distance to distance, angle the distance, uh, and two distances. And basically we're going to stick with this, the distance, which will make equal distances. And on a 90 degree angle, it's going to make it 45 degrees for the chamfer. So select this edge, and now go ahead and select this edge. And you'll see they will follow along 
the filleted edges, but they stop at sharp edges. That's because it's, it's taught to basically follow the tangent edges. Go ahead and hit OK. Now, to rotate, you could click on this block and click on faces to rotate it however you want. There's even clockwise and counterclockwise that are here. There's the home button. But if you want to rotate dynamically, hold the shift key down on your keyboard. Get your pointer in the center of the screen. Hold the wheel down like it's a button. Yes, push it down and move your mouse left, right, up and down. And that's how you dynamically rotate. Practice it for a little bit. Eventually, get it to where you could rotate, and you could release and keep rotating and release if you like doing it that way, or hold on to it. Rotate it so it's looking at from this view where the back is the top, the left, and the bottom. I just rotated it like that. I'm going to zoom up a little closer. We're going to shell this out. <clears throat> Click anywhere in the white portion of the screen to make sure you don't have anything selected. Actually, I'm going to move this over a little bit. And now we could go to Shell. So find Shell. And we're going to set it to point 0.1 in here. So point 0.1. Select this face, this face, and this face to remove. And you see the preview. If you didn't select a face, it would just shell it and hollow it out on the inside. But we want these openings. Hit OK. And there we have it. Go ahead and hold Shift and the wheel, and it will pivot. And if you want to zoom up to a certain area, you could hover your pointer over the area you're curious about and scroll towards you using the wheel. And so like if I want to scroll towards the hole or towards the bottom, I could do that in and out just by moving the wheel. If you hold the wheel down by itself, it pans. Okay, go back to the home button up here. Let's add some color to this. So up here, these values. If you hit this little arrow, there's a whole library. These are actually intelligent values. They not only adapt to the properties visually, but behind the scenes, it's actually giving you the, the like thermodynamic properties as well as the weight, the mass, um, and the characteristics of the material that you're using. So this is a very good way to find out how much the part weighs at the end. But <clears throat> you could select one of those, or if you go over here, this is just but these are materials that are just for the exterior, to the, the appearance, basically. And they're not smart materials like the ones over there. So let's go ahead and pick something. I would recommend a polished metal. And it is alphabetic, so if you go down, you'll eventually get to polished options. Um, let's see, none of those really appeal. Uh, silver. Go ahead and double click on silver and it should assume the properties of that. Now, if you want to go even further, you could go ahead and select surfaces. If you hold control on the keyboard, you could select certain faces of the, of the fillets and even the hole. And I'll go to that button there and pick something else. Like maybe um, I want that to be dark forest green. And so that's how you could apply to individual faces. <clears throat> now, if you want a photorealistic rendering of this, and by the way, at this point, this is optional. My students in my class, you don't have to do this, but it will make a nice portfolio for you. Go to View, and under Visual Style, you'll see there's Realistic. That makes it look a little bit more real, but there's also more. There's shadows, there's uh, ground shadows. You could turn that on, object shadows. You could go to Reflections if you want Reflections on. And you could turn on, instead of Orthographic, turn to Perspective. It gives it a vanishing point, so it looks more realistic, like a photograph. And then finally, you could click on Ray Tracing. Now, Ray Tracing actually takes up resources from your computer. It uses the CPU, and you can see on the lower right the progress. And also notice how it looks much cleaner and it's a very nice rendering. Now you have the ability to hover over this area down here and select draft or high quality. I have it on low and it still looks pretty good. Now, those of you who are in my class at this point, you are done with this exercise and all I need you to do, especially if you have it rendered like this, uh, you could do the, if you hold the, on your keyboard, the Windows key and hold shift and hit the S as in SAM key. 
Now it will all go gray, but you could click and drag a fence to surround just the geometry you want to copy. It will put it actually in your pictures directory if you have Windows 11. In Windows 10, it just puts it on the clipboard. And so you can paste it either into a Word or Google Doc and save it as a PDF and send it to me, or you could even put it in Microsoft Paint and send it to me. Now, if you want, you could also do this. You could go to File, and there's Print, or Export, I should say, and there's PDF. And so you could set, save it as a PDF that way too. I don't believe it brings over the rendered image as much as it brings over what looks like, it would probably look like this, like shaded with edges. And which is fine, that looks great. And so those of you in my class, submit that in your assignments area of D2L. And then as a PDF, preferably don't send me the part file because part files are very large, they'll clog up my system. Also, now you could go on to Lab 1 and Lab 1B. So in the assignments area of D2L, you could just scroll down and you'll see the labs and there's videos that go with those too. Hope you enjoyed this.